This is Twitter's favorite New Japan Pro Wrestling content creator, Suplex, and I just got finished watching New Japan Pro Wrestling Dominion 2024 in Osaka Joe Hall. And I must say, it was a good show. I, definitely not better than last year's show. I would even say somewhere in the middle of Dominion shows I've seen over the last seven years, but overall good. I had to get up at 3 a.m. to watch this show. Wasn't enthused about that, but it went in about three and a half hours and had about nine matches. Wish we would have had less matches, but three and a half hours to four hours for a New Japan show, a big New Japan show, is pretty good in my book. So, that being said, let's get into the card. The opening match of Dominion was Tetsuya Naito versus Callum Newman. Now, admittedly, I don't watch New Japan as much as I used to, so I was unfamiliar with this Callum Newman guy. I just saw that he had a United Empire shirt on. I'm like, oh, okay, he's part of Will Ospreay's. Well, I guess... Who does the faction belong to now? It just clicked in my head that Will Ospreay's not in New Japan. So like, is there a new leader of the faction? And if there is, someone tell me down below because I, I honestly don't know. Callum Newman is a member of that faction. I'm like, okay, Will Ospreay faction. We'll see what he can do. I assumed he was a young line by the black trunks and the black boots. I kind of noticed like the little green on the patches on the side, but I didn't think too much of it. This guy was moving, bro. I mean, this guy was running the ropes fast as like Braun Breaker does in WWE. He was doing flips, like here and there doing flips. You know, he was doing strikes. At one point, he went for a fucking os cutter. And then someone in my chat said that he was trained by Will Ospreay. And I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Even at one point, he kicked out of Tetsuya Naito's running Destino, which was pretty shocking. In the end, though, Tetsuya Naito did get the win. He gave Tetsuya Naito a run for his money, so I will not discount anything from Callum Newman in this match. I have my eye on that guy going forward. I would give this match three and a quarter out of five stars. I don't think it's anything great. Nothing you have to watch, like, right away. But, you know, I think if you were a, a, a newer fan getting into the product, it's a nice opening match. We had the team of Zack Sabre Jr., Kosai Fujita, and Robbie Eagles of TMDK versus Drilla Maloney, Clark Connors, and LJ Cleary. Now, I will admit to you, this was the match I was kind of ripening the crust out of my eyes for, like, you know, in and out of it, went to go get something to eat because it's like 3.30 in the morning and now I'm starving. Went to get some coffee, came back to it, and what I saw was it was it was a decent tag match. It's a typical six-man tag match in New Japan. Everyone got their offerings. The top guy of the faction being Zack Sabre Jr. got the win by pinning LJ Cleary. I circled back to the match and I saw that Zack Sabre Jr. got the win over LJ Cleary with the Emerald Flosion, which was fine. I'd go like, I'd be fair and go three stars. There's nothing wrong with the match. It was just decent. Didn't really have too much going for it. Not bad, not boring, just mid. It was a tag match set up for the Noah show coming up next week, which I'm excited for and I will likely be watching. The team of Toriano, Botlin, Oatleg, and the president ace Hiroshi Tanahashi defended their never open weight six man tag team championship against LIJ's Bushi, Hiromu Takahashi, and Yoda Suji. For sure, a big step up from the previous six-man tag, and you can't go wrong with an LIJ versus Tanahashi goon match. Do I dare call it chaos because Toriano's there? I don't know. One thing I will say, I was very new to the Oleg guy. That was my first time seeing him in a match. He was fucking huge. I mean, this guy was just... First of all, I was impressed that he was able to lift up a grown-ass man like Yoda Suji and just do repeated gut like you know how cesaro will like claudio castagnoli will lift somebody up for like a gut red suplex and he'll do like a little like flip over here flip over there this guy did like eight rotations of that with a grown-ass man like that's impressive low-key was thinking this guy was baby gunther because when he did come out during his entrance he had that long trench coat that gunther really wears he had no knee pads no like he looked like a like a baby gunther it was actually really funny and the guy is named oleg i know it's not german it's russian but the joke writes itself Match ended with Yoda Suji hitting his gene blaster, his launching spear, onto Hiroshi Tanasi, the president ace, and getting the pin for LIJ. Yoda Suji, Hiromu Takahashi, and Bushi, your new never six man tag team champions. I believe this is Yoda Suji's first championship in New Japan, and I want to say this might be Hiromu Takahashi's first non junior tag championship. So big W's all around for LIJ. I would give this match three and three quarters out of five stars. Just a fun match overall. Nothing too crazy, but you know what I mean? Generally a good time. And we have new champions. You know, we're setting up the lay of the land for Yoda Suji, who hopefully they actually pull the trigger on because I feel like every time they put him in a top spot, he always loses. Like they just, they, they get cold feet at the, at, the, at the very end. So hopefully 
him pinning Hiroshi Tanahashi leads to something really, really big in the future. Good Lord, I almost skipped Yu Yu Yamura versus Great Okan for the KOPW Championship. How could I forget this match? This was a Storm Cat Rules match. It was a very interesting concept. 15 minute time limit, grapple and submissions, only two rope breaks or two ring exits throughout the whole match. And if you leave the ring a third time or get a rope break again, it's a DQ. It's basically Ring of Honor's pure rules match just with more limitations. It made for an interesting concept on paper. And I think in execution, it was good, but could have been done a little bit better in a sense that New Japan is a very strike heavy wrestling promotion, as is all Japanese professional wrestling. Strikes are a very vital part of fighting spirit and just Japanese culture. So when you withhold that from two men who would benefit from strikes, not saying these guys aren't good at grapples, but they're not they're not Zack Saber Jr. and Katsuri Shibata. It just led to some redundancy in this match. Like Yu Yamura started aiming at the arm at the very early going and was just kind of relying on arm bars and Kimura's for, throughout the whole match. A lot of takedowns from the great Okan. Like I feel like at one point it just got a little boring. But I wouldn't call this a bad match either. It was Great Okan who got the win with his two-handed choke slam to secure the victory and become the new KOPW champion. I would give this match like three and a quarter out of five stars. Didn't light the world on fire, but it was it was it was it was pretty decent. Now we're gonna move on to the match that took place after the six-man tag. This one took place before the six-man tag. I got it mixed up. Jeff Cobb defended his NJPW World Television Championship against Tomohiro Ishii. If you've seen one Tomohiro Ishii versus a Bruiser match, you've seen them all. They don't really stick out too much from each other. Ishii's just really fucking great at putting on the same match every single time. Admittedly, I fall for it because I enjoyed this match a lot. Jeff Cobb being the muscle to throw Ishii around and do his little like tour of the islands, twisting suplexes, you know, that adds diversity to this match. That would have been missing if it was like Ishii versus Shingo for like the ninth time. Tomohiro Ishii got hit with Tour of the Islands by Jeff Cobb and got pinned, Jeff Cobb retaining his NJPW World Television Championship. This match is under 15 minutes, hard hitting, digestible. I'd give it four and a quarter out of five stars. It's not lighting the world on fire, but it is overall really good match. I'd say if there's a few matches to check on the show, this is one of them. Hikuleo and El Fantasmo versus Hiroki Goto and Yoshihashi versus Kensa and Chase Owens versus TMDK for both the IWGP and Strong Openweight Tag Team Championships. It was an eight-man elimination tag that I would say got better the closer we got to the end of it. First team out being Hikuleo and El Fantasmo with Hikuleo getting pinned. After the match, he looked very frustrated on Fantasmo and left he and Jado behind. Streets are saying that he's heading to Streets are saying that he's heading to WWE, likely to be a part of the bloodline. I don't know his contract status, but if he is. No hate towards Hikuleo, but like he's never done anything for me in the ring personally. So if he goes to WWE, like, cool. Can't wait to see you in the Bloodline story. If he stays in New Japan, also cool with me. Yoshihashi pinned Chase Owens shortly after to narrow it down to just Bishimon and TMDK. And they had a nice little like five, seven minute matchup there that I really want to see full length sometime in the near future. Bishimon tried their hardest, but it was TMDK hitting their super tank machine or whatever they call their finishing move, which is really, really dope. They hit on to Yoshihashi and got the pin, and they are your new IWGP Tag Team and Strong Comperweight Champions, which I'm pretty sure they're unifying the championships, so probably will soon be just the IWGP Tag Team Championships again. Generally, a really good tag team match that I would give three and three quarters out of five stars. There was a lot going on in the very early going. It could have benefited from just being like maybe a tag team gauntlet, but overall, good stuff. Shingo Takagi defended his never open weight championship against Hanare who I still out of habit called Toa Hanare, which is not too much different from me calling Raquel Rodriguez, Raquel Gonzalez, even though she's been Raquel Rodriguez for like almost three years now. I still do it habitually. I, I, I'm, I try and I'm trying, okay? This, in my opinion, easily could have been matched in a night if it were not for one big thing, which I will talk about a little bit later on. Different matches consist of a lot of strikes, lariats, suplexes, and that's what we saw here in this match. I said as much with like Ishii versus Jeff Cobb, like never matches tend to follow the same pattern and it's very easy. Well, I guess it's easy to kind of just like fall into the, oh my God, this is a great match. If, if you watch enough of them, it will still be a great match, but you'll be like, yeah, I feel like I kind of saw this match already. That's why I referenced like Shingo versus Ishii for like the ninth time. Like all of the matches are great, but they have the same match like every time. So Hanari being in this match is spicing it up with headbutts and like kicks instead of doing like, you know, the typical like, you know, elbow lariat exchange, which they did do, but 
you know, Shingo would do a, a elbow and then Hanari would fall back with a kick. Like that kind of like, you know, spiced it up a little bit. Also, Hanari just matches Shingo's energy anytime they're in the ring with each other. They had a great match earlier in the year, which I don't think anybody really talks about. And they rematched here and I thought it was, I thought this was great. I thought this, they were on par to having match of the night. They were having their final sequence, you know, punches and elbows and kicks and people were no selling and Hanari was kicking out at one which was fucking dope then he had a running headbutt onto Shingo and both men were down the referee started counting and I'm like okay somebody's about to get up then the referee got to nine and nobody was getting up I'm like are they about to just jump up to their feet at the last second that would be kind of dope but also like but to my surprise they both stayed down by the count of ten and this match ended in a draw. If you think I'm exaggerating, I'm not. You could watch it back. The crowd was hype. Like, they were firmly behind Hanare winning this match. And as soon as the referee counted 10, it's like the energy just got sucked out of that place. It got real quiet for like a few seconds after the referee counted 10. Like, the disappointment was immense. I did not like the finish at all. Like, you're at a big stage at the menu and you end the match on a draw. It's like, oh, but Kenny Omega and Okada too ended in a draw. This isn't Kenny Omega versus Kazuchika Okada. This is Toa Hanari versus Shingo Takagi. This is not some super intense, long-running rivalry where you have to protect both men by making sure nobody gets pinned. Hanari has been pinned multiple times this year. Shingo has been pinned many times in the past. Who did this finish protect exactly? No one is protected by this finish. It just made for a very anticlimactic end to what was a great match. Shingo retains the title, but it doesn't feel well earned. Which, again, detracts away from the match. I wanted to give this match four and three quarters, but I'm gonna knock it down to four and a half. Still a great match, but the finish sucked, and it does not deserve higher than four and a half for that reason. Then we got into the highly anticipated matchup between John Moxley and Evil for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. And I, like many of you, had worries going into this match for more reasons than one. My first worry was that this match was going to suck because Evil's involved. You know, him in the House of Torture and their interferences, his moveset being heavily dialed back from where he was five years ago. There was a lot to worry there. And then the second worry was that he might actually win this whole match. The second worry is that Evil may actually win, which would have been horrible. Especially considering that Forbidden Door is coming up. I'm going to be there live and I do not want to see Evil live. I would rather shit in my hands and clap than watch a House of Torture match live and in person. I also forgot this was a Lumberjack match. So when the House of Torture came out, I was like, yeah, I expect this. But then John Moxley came out with like... <laughs> Shota Umino and Hiroshi Tenzan and Yuji Nagata and Tiger Mask. I'm like, what are, what are they doing out here? Then I remembered it's a Lumberjack match. I'm like, oh, okay. So this is going to be interferences no matter what. It's unavoidable. <laughs> but at that point, my expectations dropped down to ground zero. I'm like, you know what? We just, we just going to have to deal with whatever we deal with in this match. And it was not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Would I say it was good? Not really. But it was definitely not bad. House of Torture interferences were counteracted by, you know, Sekigun and Shota Umino. I think at points they got a little too involved when they were getting into the ring and fighting each other. I'm like, all right, let's stay outside the ring. It's a lumberjack match for a reason. Stay outside of the ring. There was even one point where John Moxley got thrown outside of the ring. And for some reason, all of House of Torture just spawned belts in their hands and started whipping him like 12 years of evil. I know some people are joking that House of Torture is like a comedy faction. And I'm not going to lie. If there was a funniest part of the show, it was that spot. So I, I might give them flowers for having, you know, maybe a little bit of a chuckle out of me. He did just about everything. He put him through a table. He hit him with chairs. He he did. Everybody interfered in this match. They wanted you to believe that he had him beat. He never hit everything as evil. So I, I took note of that. When John Moxley got back into the ring with the barbed wire bat, I said, oh, it's a wrap. <laughs> it's a wrap. He was swinging around, hitting everybody from House of Torture. And eventually he got evil down with a paradigm shift onto the barbed wire bat and got the win to retain the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. I would give this match three stars. Like I said, not good, not bad, more so mid, better than I expected it to be. Also off topic, but when Shota Umino was walking away with John Moxley, I was really looking at Shota Umino like, yo, my son got big as shit out of nowhere, bro. What are y'all feeding this man? I mean like big, like as in like he, he getting a little ripped. I'm like, okay, I mean like, I mean like, what? What is he on? I need some of that shit. The main event of the evening was the best of the Super Juniors 31 finals, El Desperado versus Taiji Ishimori. History in the making as this is the first time that the BOSJ finals is in the main event of Dominion. I was beyond happy for the juniors when I heard about this. I love me some Despi and Taiji Ishimori. He's way overdue for like one of these 
be a YSJ win. So anybody winning, I'm all for it. This match is really good. I think even bordering great. In the very early going, El Desperado is aiming at Taiji Shimori's leg. Working limbs. It's like, if you've seen New Japan main events, it's like first act, second act, third act. First act, you'll be working the limbs, setting up for the second act, which is when they start, you know, kicking into a bit of a higher gear. And then the third act is like the final sequences with all the near falls and shit. They get into the second sequence and I'm like, all right, you know, Kaden Aiden Destroyer here, you know, arm drag there. They're starting to trade more submissions with each other. I'm like, this is starting to cook. Let's go. Finish your counters and whatnot. And then my man, El Desperado hits the Pinche de Loco Paul Driver, like a Tiger Driver 93, basically. Rolls that into Pinche de Loco and gets the win to win BOSJ 31. I'm all hype. I'm like, yo, Despy got the win. Let's go. But then I was kind of like, that's it? Like... That, that's, uh, that's it. The match, I felt like, probably was shy of 20 minutes. And I honestly feel like there was never a third act. It was like, once the second act ended, they went straight to the finish. It felt almost like the match got cut for time. Like, they were rushed. I don't know if any of you feel that way, but I feel like this match was a little underwhelming. Not that it wasn't great, but it could have been way, way better. Especially for BOSJ Finals. I mean, BOSJ Finals historically are always match of the year caliber matches. This is not going to be in my match of the year like category at all. Still great shit though, especially El Desperado finally winning a BOSJ tournament. I would give this match four and a quarter out of five stars. For BOSJ Finals, disappointing before match. Overall, great. For those of you wondering my thoughts on G1 Climax 34, I am excited that they're going back to 10 wrestlers per block. As far as the finals, when they get into a playoff tournament and then the semifinals goes up against the semifinalists and the finalists and then there's like a mini tournament for, I, I, I'm not a fan of that. I wish they would go back to the standard G1 Climax format of 10 men to each block, the most points from A block and the most points from B block go up against each other, and that's the tournament. Ever since G1 Climax 32, they've just been adding and adding and adding, and it's like, all right, bro, like, uh, you're not doing too much. This is too, this is too much for me to follow right now. I'm sure there are some of you that are excited for this tournament no matter what, and I'm happy for you. I will probably just wait for the lineup to come out before I start like, oh my God. But you know what I mean? Like so far it's like, mm, okay, cool. Anyway, overall, I think Dominion was a generally really good show. Just nothing to write home about. I would say the show overall is like a seven out of 10 at most. Definitely not better than last year's show. Definitely not as newsworthy as last year's show, but you know, New Japan, they, they doing their thing. We're heading into Forbidden Doors. So, you know what I mean? I'll, I'll be watching New Japan and AEW for the rest of the month. Here guys, thoughts on Dominion, comment down below. Let me know. Talk more soon.